Welcome to Audio Branding, the hidden gem of marketing. Sound plays a more important role in human behavior and our decision-making than you may realize. In this podcast, I'll help you understand the art and science of sound so you can better influence others in business and your life. I'm your host, Jody Krangle. Let's delve a little deeper. I love that. And I want to know more about your podcast. So you started that in, like you said, a year and a half ago? Is that yeah, how? really, really January 2020, uh, mm-hmm. just before the break, famously just before the break. Um, let's see, I'm a, so if it's, if we're in May of 2023 years, I've been out, mm-hmm. I've got uh, just, I just published my 40th episode. So I am unfortunately not a great example of consistency, <laughs> but I can tell you the value of consistency. I see it. I mean, I know when I'm back to back weeks, I see the growth. Um, I have 180 episodes at oh, this point God that bless. are all programmed out once a week oh, for I love that. three and a half years now. <laughs> so oh, that's the way to, yeah, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. yeah that, batching. Like, oh my God. Batching saves my life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just about energy reserve. There's no, there's, yes. you know, but here, here's what I hear with what you did though. It sounds to me like you didn't find time to create something. And then like when you can create something, when I can get to the edit, when I can get to the episode, when I can have that conversation, mm-hmm. maybe I'm going to do it. It sounds like you said, Okay, 52 weeks of the year, that's 52 episodes I have to deliver. There's an allotment that I got to make. Let's get to it. And when you can build those healthy boundaries, when you identify and you're working from a quota, like, look, we're media pros. So like when you're hired by a network, you have a, you started at a negative number, negative 10 ideas, you need (laughs) 10 more ideas before the Mm -hmm. end of the month, you know, so we, we know we have to hit these numbers versus the other flip side of, of the approach to podcasting, which is, um, you know, if and when, and, and I find those people are often the people who say, Oh, you know, I had an idea. I just, you know, I just, it was just an idea. But y'all, if you're listening to this, please make time for those ideas, please share those ideas. And if you're not going to move on those ideas, please give them to somebody who can, Yeah, because those ideas are important. And also they're probably made with words and things and nouns and verbs that you learned from other people, from your teacher in fifth grade, from your cousin, from watching TV. So these are not things that are proprietarily mine. If you have a great idea, share it. The idea yeah. of sharing that concept is creativity. And um, I just really like to, to make time for those passion projects. Sure. Like, well, I like what you were saying before, like create, yeah, you know, yeah. if you're going to do it, commit, just do commit it. And create. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I will say that I had a podcast that had about 30 episodes about six months before I had this audio branding podcast. And I learned a ton just by starting. Like oh, I just yeah. started out of the blue. I didn't even know what the hell I was doing. Like I just, <laughs> I just started out of the blue. I was like, okay, this podcasting thing, I'm going to figure this out. <laughs> and I just went and did it. Yeah, and I it wasn't that. actually where I ended up because people start asking you to do the things that you talk about in your podcast. And my podcast was just about general wisdom of life experience and stuff. And people started asking me to be a life coach. And the minute that happened, I was like, Oh, no, no. Yeah, yeah. What you, I got to stop doing this. Yeah, what, what are you hearing in that message? Yeah, what is... yeah, clearly, this is not what I meant to do. Yes, exactly. So well, when you can, yeah. when you're when you're amazing at what you do, and you make something you unique, successful. I find that people are attracted to those types of, of leaders to to solve any issue. Like they can, mm. only, they feel like, well, if you're able to create something of nothing in this creative way, then maybe, maybe you're the person to, um, I, f- I found that in this world of creating content and going to podcast and getting to meet people who sure. create content and our coaches and, and that space that, that there's something attractive about that success model of being creative, mm-hmm. being unique, and how people can apply that skill set to their lives or their, that want of your skill set to that lives too. So for all y'all creatives I, yeah. out there who can relate to probably like these calls, right, Jody? Like we get these calls. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Gosh, just I'm thinking of all my reality TV phone calls that I've gotten. <laughs> <over my life. laughs> I want to find the right guy, but I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm too busy at work and I'm just so powerful and rich that I can't find the right wife. And I'm like, is that, 
Is that <laughs> why you think you can't find that? Yeah, those? that's my thought <laughs> too. <laughs> Hi, Patty Stanger. I got one for you. <laughs> boop, 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 bravo. Yep, got another one. <laughs> um, oh my but you goodness. know what? But the times changed actually, and Bravo wouldn't Bravo wouldn't even have that type of person on anymore because that that mm-hmm. that person is um, fast to move and slow to ch- is slow to move and fast to change. I think what makes you know a great leader now are people who do have the ability to move fast and change slow. That there's mm-hmm. a constant evolving need to change, but there's an inc- we to be a thought leader, you have to be in the front. Oh yeah, you can be a content provider. <clears throat> no offense, MTV, where they kind of got like now, versus <laughs> when I was there back in the day, where there was leadership and thought leadership and crafting original form. Like we took we took stories and said, comedies could be thirty minutes if they're funny. We can show people's funny lives in thirty minutes if it's serious. If there's a process, we can do sixty minutes. Like these are decisions that those creatives made that still last to this day. Most procedural shows are an hour long. Most comedies are a half hour long and those comedies are often you know with commercials (laughs) yeah with commercials yeah of course so it ends up being a what 44 minutes something like that (laughs) yeah like 42 and i think 20 40 yeah 44 and 22 and a half minutes right yeah seven and a half eight minutes of uh (laughs) commercial and and necessary fcc government regulated media that needs to hit yes (laughs) but that's that lovely but that's just you know that's if you understand Mm -hmm. that Especially in America, and if you're getting, you know, your local news piped into you during a national news broadcast, if you're getting your local weather during the Today Show, you understand how there can be a broadcast that is micromanaging the media you're seeing based on the geographic that you're at. So based on the geography of where you sit, you're going to see this feed of media and that's we can simply drop into something that's airing nationally. That makes me excited about the RSS. That Mm -hmm. makes me excited about podcast meets broadcast. I can see a future where there's Bravo FM and it is the 40 podcasts that are independent of Bravo that are supporting all the Bravo content that, by the way, probably Bravo advertisers would be happy to sponsor. Mm -hmm. Also, probably Bravo is letting those housewives go on those or pushing those housewives or, or directing those housewives to go on those and and those that's how television by the way is able to make one episode of housewives for one hour and then get an additional 40 hours of audio content or audio and video content about that actual episode because of podcasting so i get excited about where where how how podcasting can truly support it i get nervous about video podcasts like that that's <laughs> yeah. an excuse oh it's a yeah. video podcast that just means what a static camera with a microphone covering my face mm-hmm. which like we just got to be careful about what's valuable to the listener or the audio you know the whole experience sure. right coming yeah. from like when when they thought like oh it's bonus footage so it can be like the things you didn't think were good enough to be on tv it's like <laughs> why would someone choose oh. to watch that <laughs> yeah yeah well i mean you know i guess it's kind of the same thing of people rehashing the episode after it's already aired you know like what uh, what yeah. is that like <laughs> i mean i understand it's really yeah. popular i get it and lots of people want to have their discussion afterwards but again that's it's it, b-roll <laughs> but that's but what you're saying that is context context of content yeah. that's going to lead to the community that's the that that's that next wave that's that's why sure. i think from the creator economy we're headed towards the community economy because it is context yeah. of content um it's what's keeping the big tv networks alive is is the news look if you watch secession or if you'd like me to point out how it's working on television there's a news department <laughs> and the news department yeah. has a quota so mm-hmm. what they do is they look at abc looks at disney and its subsidiaries nbc looks at oxygen and peacock and its subsidiaries and it looks for content to create and and to be honest that's why i like linkedin for my podcast i like linkedin because linkedin has a department called the linkedin news department that actually oh. operates as a news department and is looking for content it's publishing content not just on linkedin but outside of linkedin as well and under the linkedin news flag is podcast their their podcast network now and is this only audio or is it video as well audio okay yeah, yeah, so it's... when you do a linkedin live mm-hmm. when you do your podcast mm-hmm. is it only audio um, no. So what I'll, so that's normally what I'll do is an interview and then I'll take pieces of that interview and cut it into 
my podcast. So, oh, I see. Okay. So, because I'm also leveraging the video for um, our TV show distributed by Bespoke TV, watch on, on Direct TV okay. and Cox. And so there's like, there's the video support there. Uh-huh. Um, and then I also have um, a radio show. So uh, I pay about $2,000 a month. I get one half hour weekly show, 22 minutes of, of audio sure. content. And then every day, I get a 60 second spot pushing to my radio show and I'm able to not even have to change the episode because I'm able to change the location of the FM radio because I'm, I'm using hard terrestrial radio like the FM dial because there's already okay. tuning to that mm-hmm. versus leveraging the digital space of audio where I'm going to have to tell you how to find 5DLX minus 564C channel D, you know what I mean? Yeah. That, that digital yeah. ink space. Um, so I'm, 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 I'm leveraging those, but I am strategic about it. I LinkedIn taught me that podcasts that have communities between episodes, like mm-hmm. when, like the, those tent pole moments obviously are downloads, but when there's moments for community between the downloads, that those are the podcasts that tend to grow the fastest and stay the strongest connection with nice. their audience. Newsletters on LinkedIn are kind of ridiculous. Like I, I don't. LinkedIn newsletters, by the way, are they're like a blog and they're SEO indexed, so you can find mm-hmm. them on Google. And they also are it's a you probably pay something on Mailchimp to send your newsletter. It's nothing on LinkedIn, and I get an email sent to your inbox, and I get an alert on my phone from LinkedIn. And just a lot of benefits to the, when when someone follows me for the mm-hmm. first time on LinkedIn. The next thing the system does is recommend that they might want to follow my newsletter. And LinkedIn says that people follow, we share newsletters as resources. We we want to be shared. Look, there's ego involved in sharing. Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, like, totally. I found it. I found Jody. <laughs> Casting director found Jody. <laughs> right? Like there's ego in, in this. If you can play into mm-hmm. that ego, then mm-hmm. you could be more shareable. And I say this, y'all, if you're actors out there trying to audition and you're looking, when you meet a casting director, tell them, look them in the eye mm-hmm. and say, hey. You, you could literally be the person who breaks me and I will forever be in debt to you. And I would love to make you a big famous casting director. I have to be honest. People have said that to me and it works and they're gigantic <laughs> celebrities and I'm, I'm honored and my life would be nowhere without them, but it's the mm-hmm. alchemy of success. It's the, it's the want and drive. It's the clarity they had. They're like, yeah, if you can get me this job then, and, and I can rock it for you, then like you already get hired for these types of jobs. Like this is, you know, this is how we amplify. It. This is how we amplify each other. This is how we raise up. Yeah. So, um, how important is the sound in your podcast? Oh. I just want to ask that. Yeah. That's yeah, a great I question. Mean... It, it um, because of the radio opportunity, mm-hmm. I doubled down. Um, you know, I did this. I did this thing that I think is so annoying that most podcasters do. When you start, you get like a maybe twenty five dollar. Or, oh, or a free microphone, whatever mic. you got, yeah, yeah. you know, whatever around you. <laughs> yeah. And then you get the hundred dollar, and then you get the one fifty, and you gotta really commit before you make the two seventy. This this microphone I love, mm-hmm. um, and uh, I actually recently at Podfest got to, to uh, this year meet a bunch of uh, professionals, and and then meeting them, uh, <laughs> it was interesting. The feedback I got was they were surprised I was so tall. And then I got, and, and was, okay. so, so all of a sudden the story engine in my mind is like, well, why do you think I'm so tall? You know, like I'm a tenor. My voice is high. It's kind of pitchy. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if you look at like, it's a little bit more feminine. Females are t- generally uh-huh. like, you know, like I'm trying to figure out like where, where they're going with this. But that story brought me to Roger Cloud from Cloud Microphones. Um, sure. So I've currently got a, a Shure microphone connected to a cloud lifter that is enhancing my voice that that I don't have to be in my mind in my head about uh-huh. how am I coming through that I finally feel like I have the equipment and that I'm going to be successful and this recording will be fantastic because of my equipment not maybe because of my yeah. equipment yeah. that's as a creator wonderful because oh. there's nothing worse than going into the edit and being like oh we didn't we didn't do that right. We didn't get the oh. mic right, or we didn't get that, yeah. that other piece right. Also, um, I listen. I listen now, so there's feedback. So when I hear versus before, and I think there was a part of me that didn't want feedback because I was afraid I'd be obsessed with like what was happening now, and I wouldn't be in it. But what I realized is that I can be in it, and I can control 
the next moment and this moment that happens that I can mm-hmm. put out in terms of energy based on the sounds. And if I sound distorted and blown out, then there's no matter how right I am or passionate I am, that message won't come through. Yeah. And I realized that I was making all of those decisions up front to jeopardize the clarity of my my message by not having the right equipment and, and space also. Uh, oh, yes. I carve out time in my calendar. This is routine for me. My dogs are used to it. The alarms mm-hmm. are turned off. I've got everything covered. <laughs> that yeah. makes a big difference. It makes it a big totally difference. It totally does. Especially yeah. if you have if you're if you're if you have a young child. I, I mentioned I have dogs. We're cooperating <laughs> right now. Like we've already had our vocal time. I know I have to play about five minutes before we go so they're tired <laughs> and they go to sleep. And and it's, yeah. it's that process. Mm -hmm. So that I can be successful, again, because of my surroundings and not in spite of them. Yeah, yeah. Your surroundings make a difference as well for how much echo you're going to hear on your recordings as well. So something to to pay attention for some people. Although I have to tell you, I kind of did this the opposite way. I have expensive equipment in my voiceover booth, Mm -hmm. right? Like I have like the best mics and I don't, you know, I, I have really good audio interfaces. I don't worry about any of that. Like it's all taken care of. But when it came to my podcast, I started with that. And then I kind of ended up on video a lot more often and so my background and everything surrounding me needs to be professional looking Mm -hmm. and and so I went with a mic that I could change the color of so that it matches my branding oh I love that it's kind of cool right so yeah but this is a cheap mic this is not an expensive (laughs) mic so it's a hyper x it's a gamer mic and because I'm on a PC, I can change this color to anything I want it to be. That's cool. And it's, yeah, it's con- it's a USB condenser mic. And because I'm close enough to it, you're not hearing the room. Right. Which, you know, I haven't really done much to, to be honest, because I'm sitting at my desk instead of inside my booth where I'd be wearing the Princess Leia headphones, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's, I, you know, there's so much of this. Yes, I'm really worried about the sound. But uh, uh, my friend George Whittem also says this, and, and, and he's the one who gave me this phrase, if it sounds good, it is good. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. That's, yeah. I, that sounds good to me, by the way. The customization is phenomenal. What we can do now to customize the process, like mm-hmm. you're saying, you didn't change the room. Like, I wanted something where I could feel comfortable being me. Yeah. Um, and where it felt like. I can be the version of me I am on camera and off camera and slip. Sometimes when there's a camera in front of you and the lights turn on all of a sudden, you, you, yeah. it's almost impossible to not change who you are. So th- this setup that you're seeing, I adopted as my go-to permanent. It is what it is, except for the up lighting, which gives me a little, nothing yeah. says I'm a, I'm a professional audio personality, <laughs> like having up lighting, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but the it's customization, the customization of the microphone is that's super cool. Like that we can I like it. Customize. I worked on a show called Pimp My Ride a long time ago. And it's like okay, the yeah. custom if you can customize that creative process. Some some people just need a, a switch they can flip up so the cameras turn on and the lights turn mm-hmm. on. And it is what it, some people like a process about get, for me, I talked about the dogs. Maybe if you maybe some people gargle or do audio drills or voice, you know, <laughs> yeah. like, you know, warm ups and things like that before. It's important to have that that process. We don't go to the gym without warming up. You know, a lot of people yeah. will get into podcasting and start recording without really focusing on the fact that this is a sport. This is, this takes muscle yeah. and emotional memory and muscle memory. And there's a lot to making sure your, your point is coming across. There is a lot more to it, I think, than a lot of people imagine. And I wanted to ask you about that as well, because you talk about storytelling as well. So obviously podcasting, should be storytelling. I don't know if it always is. <laughs> but uh, where do you think it comes in when it comes to podcasting? Yeah. Um, so it's funny. We're, we're obsessed with storytelling right now. Uh, we're almost too quick, in my opinion. This is not mm-hmm. maybe my opinion. This is my professional stance to tell stories. <laughs> okay. We're not even vetting stories before we're sharing them. This is where weird words like fake news and other things start coming into the lexicon because we're just moving at a at a at a speed and pace 
that just wasn't just truly, you know, <laughs> wasn't meant to be without without the, the aid of technology. And it, <sighs> there's so much focus on story that and not enough focus on source. And it, if, if you're out there and you feel as an artist, for example, that your songs are amazing, you don't just put out a bunch of singles. You put out an album and the album is the source of those songs. And you are the source thereof that album because you go on tour and you wrote it and we understand, you know, where it comes from. Um, so, so source could sometimes be the genesis of, you know, the characters that are in the stories, you know, in and of themselves. But oftentimes it's not. I mean, I'm sharing stories that aren't mine that I'm letting that I'm learning about from my colleagues and coworkers that aren't mine. But if I can position myself as the source, if in my voice, you know, yes, I'm always going to have stories. They're never probably going to, well, they'll always be mine or someone else's or I don't even know what I was going to say there. Um, if you could hear that I'm telling stories and know that those stories are true, whether they're mine or not, right? Like that I have that access to those, like that's so that you don't have to question if you should be listening to me or if you should trust or if you should take the leap. You should take that leap of faith. If you should start creating just because I said to create, you know, and I want you to hear that because I try to be a source. I try really hard to be a source. I, I want people when they hear me to go and start creating it's, or by the way, why y'all are listening to this podcast right now, go put on, like, go write yourself an email, send yourself an email with three great ideas that you're capable of doing that you can make so that the stuff that you should do is set up. Because if you're, if you should be creating, then you're no longer leading the thought process. I don't know how to say this. It, it, how about this? Let, let's get past <clears throat> what you can be doing is creating. What you should be doing is posting what you created. What you shouldn't be doing is creating content that you feel like you should be posting. Creating content point. and posting content are two different things. It takes years to make a Pixar film. They don't wait till 2023 to say, oh, we should make a movie about this has to get out because humanity needs this message. No, what I truly believe because of the power of this, these smartphones and, our, and, and microphones that are almost on everything now these days, to be, if you focused on creating content that you can make, and have a catalog, by the way. I'm one of those. I'm the friend that everyone's like, don't let Vinny take the picture. He doesn't post anything on Instagram. It's just like <laughs> his dogs and podcasting. Like he, You just keep it. <laughs> yeah. But when the right platform shows up, right now mm -hmm. there's a new social platform called Lemonade. And I'm loving that platform. It's a place where I can throw photos that are thriving mm -hmm. and I can show process. And that doesn't work on other platforms right now. So I'll say mm -hmm. this. As a creative, I've seen platforms show up. I've way, you know before way after the, the the content that i created was even meant for it and that's going to happen probably for the rest of my life it took me 20 years to get a show on netflix by the way to see my name on netflix and the credits casting direct you know whatever um mm -hmm. and i got credit on netflix because i cast a show 25 years ago on mtv and they finally added some of the mtv catalog to mtv and now you can see episodes of the hills and laguna beach and the challenge and <sighs> some of these shows that I got to be a part of, but it took 25 years mm -hmm. for me to get to see my name on that, on that platform that I love. I love Netflix. I spend a lot of time on it. So is it, why is it important for me to be on that? <laughs> you and me both. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, right? Like, yeah, I'm I so think funny. a lot of people do. Yeah. <laughs> Not many people go, well, if I'm on it, my name, my name should be in here somewhere. Like that's just how, <laughs> just how I'm wired. Well, if you're watching and I want you to find me, I want you to, you know, here we are like minded talking about it. So I can't yeah. wait. I cannot wait for Netflix to start letting us share recommended video playlists. That's going to change, right? Like, to me, if you all want me to use my own password, I would stop letting everyone use my password. If I could create a playlist that you know would just be mine, jo Jody, I would watch. I, I can imagine the documentaries about audio that I missed, by the way, let alone the <laughs> ones that I've seen. I would watch anything in Jody Kringle's documentary playlist on Netflix in a heart. Saturdays, <laughs> line me up. <laughs> I'm binging Jody, right? Like that's going to, we trust each other. You're the source. Yeah. Well, Jody, you've done a great job. You're the source. Like you don't just create <laughs> professional high end audio content or talk about it, but you help other people do it. And you don't just do it virtually. You do it in person and in, in real life. And that's, I've been there. I've been you in the room. Try. So, yeah. yeah. And, and I know that you do the same thing. So oh, yeah. That. Yeah. So this is, 
I mean, sharing what you can offer yeah. is is can. doing that creative thing. Can, right? can, can, so, can, absolutely. Yeah. It's and the freedom it's to do worth it. Doing. It's the freedom. It's the right. Yes. You have the right, the freedom. These are big. I'm not saying these words by coincidence. These are big words that I really, truly mean we have right now. And and um, yeah, there are a lot of platforms out of there that are making it possible right now. Yeah. So yeah, that that barrier to entry is so low now. That yeah. It's it's really good. I I just always like to hope that people do think about the sound that they're putting out there because. And I think they did, I think YouTube did a study on this. People will forgive bad video. They will not forgive bad sound. Oh, yeah. They'll tune it out. They'll they'll go somewhere else. It's, so wait, as you, said you that, really got to pay attention to the, it. The, 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 the vision in my head I just had was, we know that black holes are dangerous, yet we are so <laughs> destined to get the perfect photo of the black hole. Did you hear what a black hole sounds like? Uh, you know, I heard I had a I actually have a, a blog about that. Yeah, I have a blog a, about how the universe sounds. That's terrifying. Yeah. Like, why are we? It tra- is, isn't it? Why yes. are we trying to take like? Li- by the way, hear that sound. Like, that's almost like. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, like, it tr- is, trust isn't me. It? That's like the audience. Something's coming to get you. Yeah, like, the audio man, make or break. We can't it. help it. Yeah, we can't help it. We play close to the sun. We can't help it. Yeah, we yeah. Just, that's what we do. That's true. Very true. <laughs> Uh, so uh, before we we end this and and oh I had so many other questions I wanted to ask you but we are uh, we are at our time right now right. maybe we we'll have to do this again I would love that <laughs> thank you yes thank you yeah but I want to get by the way to... accomplishment achieved anyone listening networking accomplishment goal achieved <laughs> got the invite back thank you that's huge I appreciate you so much I love you oh thank <laughs> you for being here I yeah. so appreciate all of your words of wisdom here and, right, and your focus. encouragement for creatives because Thanks. I think that that needs to be heard definitely um, I'd me. love to Hit have me. you share information about your podcast what you're working on now how people can get in touch with you oh and, I love that you know, let people reach out Thanks. Yeah. Well, uh, first off if anyone is listening to this podcast Podcast, you obviously know how to work podcasts. So after <laughs> this episode comes to a close, I'll ask you to do maybe two or three things. One is like head back over to hit stop or next episode and keep listening to Jody. Number two is maybe this is the episode possibly that leads you to finally leave Jody a five star review. Like you've been like this many episodes <laughs> into the series and you haven't done it yet. But look, now that I'm asking you, I'm going to give you one more ask. It's not about the five star review. It's about sharing that five-star review if you give jody that five-star review people who find her will will be able to benefit from that and she obviously will be able to benefit from that if you really want to help jody out take a snapshot of that five-star review and post it on social tag me tag jody my name is long so look in jody's friend list to see how it goes <laughs> but i think that's the, the most beneficial thing you can do and then here's the third podcast strategy request is after listening to Jody's podcast, if you hop over and listen to mine on I Have a Podcast, it sends a signal. If you're on Apple Podcasts, it sends a signal to Apple Podcasts that says people who listen to this podcast also listen to this podcast. And eventually, if enough people take this leap, people who listen to I Have a Podcast will see that listeners of I Have a Podcast also listen to Jody's podcast and she'll get discovery on my page on apple Podcasts because that's how data works <laughs> so the intentionality <laughs> of the data <laughs> yeah right if you know how it works the intentionality is powerful after this leave a message listen to another episode of jody maybe come listen to mine or whatever you listen to immediately next it's sending a signal to apple Podcasts specifically that people who listen to this might also enjoy this and that's an awesome opportunity for discovery all that to be said um, I have a podcast.com is my blog and I'm always looking to amplify and identify and celebrate new artists, vocal, video, podcast, creatives. I hope, unfortunately, that the W the, the Writers Guild gets worked out. If it doesn't, I cannot wait to see how I will be able to get the work with the writers. Um, who are now going to be shifting and looking for new opportunities. Also, all the talent that are going to be shifting and looking for new opportunities. If you are in audio, it, not not many things. Before Chat GPT, we used to be able to say this. Not many things write itself. <laughs> but a, a <laughs> yeah, dialogue, I guess, yeah. <laughs> a, di- a real emotional dialogue can really get you some solid content. 
and I'm not and long, long, we're long overdue of the interview format, you know, uh, podcast where it's just 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 the interview where we're finally taking these concepts and like Oprah sits down with you know the prince and then there's a special and there's a 20 minute version on Dateline and there's an after show like we're supporting these so I support my audience um, on my newsletter at and at LinkedIn so vpe.tv slash newsletter or vpe.tv slash join the convo um, will take you to my newsletter where I'm always diving in to the deeper things that I've uncovered Christina Million told me that I um, introduced her to Janet Jackson. Like we were in wow. a meeting in my office and then she was like, Vinny, do you remember when you introduced me to Janet? Like she was down in the studio. I knew she was there. And she's like, that, that blew my mind. And, <laughs> and like, I did a show with you afterwards. Cause I was like, this is, this is the place to do something. And it, it taught me the lesson of like beyond networking, you know, like you were already in my office. We already networked. We're already contacts and colleagues sure, about, yeah. about going above and beyond. Mm -hmm. So y'all want to go above and beyond. I'm telling you, five-star review, Jody Krangle. <laughs> telling you. Do it. Well, Do you know thank what? you. Just see what happens. Yeah, Just see what yeah. happens. Hand to God. See what happens. I love y'all. I, I, I <laughs> definitely think that that five-star review is uh, something that you should be getting as well. Yeah. Oh, so thanks. yeah, people should check that out well, i'll meet uh, i'll meet yeah. you all in the i'll be in the five star reviews too and jody so like come <laughs> let's go hang out in the five stars <laughs> <laughs> we'll do that yeah yeah i like that <laughs> thank you so thank much you. Vinny. this has been a lot of fun <laughs> Well, that's the end of this episode. Thanks for listening. And if you like what you heard, why not tell a friend about this podcast? It's available in all the usual locations. Until next time, 